Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the parse lookup function, the lookup function, and the list lookup control for the new responsive designer for Nintex Forms for Office 365. So this is a fairly complex topic, so we're just going to co cover off those things. It's not going to do anything else, it's just really focusing on the parse lookup, the lookup function, and the list lookup, and why you actually use them. So I've got a bunch of data, I've got some project sites sitting in my uh, my site here in my sites processed fest list. Now I've gone across and made a new team site with a list called reporting form in a completely different site collection. So I'm going to click on Nintex forms and I'm going to make a new form. Now I'm going to click new responsive designer and I want to pull some of that data from that other site collection into this Nintex form. So I'm going to get rid of the title. Uh, control first and what I want to do is go down to SharePoint and add a list lookup control so if you're not familiar with this this is pulling data from from it could be the same site could be a different site could be a different site collection but it's basically pulling choices or, or data from a different uh, different list so as I said I'm on my sites team site here I'm going to go to my process fest site here uh, it, it always defaults to the site you're currently on, but you can actually paste in a different site collection. Once I select retrieve lists, it goes off and interrogates the site for all the things that I have uh, access to. So I'm going to select project sites and I'm going to select all items. You can use um, your your list views if you want to. So you could actually doing you could be doing filtering at the SharePoint level, or you can do filtering at this level as well. So I'm just going to say default view. And then we'll select site. So what that's going to do is going to look up all the data from that other list. So cross site collection, same tenant, looking up data, and so it gives me all these different. And there's a thousand records in here, so it's quite quick. And you can also do type ahead, so you could do I don't know twin. Is there a is there a twin pines crossing? There you go. So four five five twin pines crossing. So if I come across to here. Twin, pine, pine, twin Pines is in here somewhere, I'm not going to go and find it. So that's all well and good, but what does the data look like if we were to get that as a variable? So I'll come across to here and I'm going to drag on a label. Now I will say uh, list lookup value and I can do square brackets and put my control in there. I'm just going to bold this section because I like it bold. Now if I go to preview, it's not going to say anything yet. Once I make a selection, it shows me what the control actually stores behind the scenes. Now this syntax isn't particularly helpful for you because it's got the SharePoint list item ID in it, it's got the delimiter of semicolon hash, and then it's got what you see in the dropdown. So if we go back and say Twin Pines, Twin Pines Junction, so that's item number 349 and that's the value there. So it's not super helpful. So that's why we have the parse lookup function. So let's go and have a look at what the parse lookup function does. So we'll go to it variables and we'll say create variable. We'll say parse lookup. And there's two ways you can use the parse lookup. Parse lookup true or false, which actually separates the two, the ID from the value. So the first one is going to be true. Parse lookup. And so if we go to the, maybe here, you'll see how it actually works. So all the help is in here, but basically you put in your function, the lookup value, which means that ID, semicolon, hash, etc. that value. And then you're saying the return text. So if it's, uh, so if it's true, so the return text is specified whether uh, to return the ID or the text value of the lookup value. So what we're going to do is we're going to say list lookup, and first we're going to say true. And I'll copy that because we're going to reuse it. And we'll put another one and make this false. Okay, so I've got those two in there ready to go. So we'll go back to our designer, look at our label. So parse look up true and uh, false and true. So bold that one and bold that one. And 
we'll go um, true and unbold. Pass look up. False. All right, so let's go and see what happens when we go back to preview. So I will select Maple Plaza, and then you'll see here's the here's the ID of the SharePoint item. So SharePoint has IDs for all of these. They're not just from the top one, two, three, four. They're actually given IDs as they're being created. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maple Plaza is number seven. And if you come to here, you'll see it's got the ID of seven. And then there's also the text that I've selected. Now, parse look up true gives me just the value. And that's useful because you might ha make a selection here, but on a second page, you might just want to show what they've selected. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually configure this and say page one, page two, drag this down to page two. You come back to preview, you come and select Maple Plaza. That's all well and good. I've selected that. And then I go to the next page and you can't remember what you've selected. So it's often good to just use that parse lookup function to actually show what selection they've made and that might be over multiple pages as an example and then what you'll also notice is you've now got the parse lookup function false and that's just giving me the ID so why would you just need the ID so if we come back to our list as we come back to Maple Plaza let's say I've selected that and that's all well and good and I can show Maple Plaza on my page too which we saw before but I might not only want to show the address, I might want to show the state and the project manager, for instance. So what we do is we use the parse lookup function to actually extend another function. So we go to variables again. What we're going to do is a different one. So I'm going to look up the project manager. Let's quickly put a placeholder there for the moment. And we also want to say, look up state okay so now we're going to say look up and there's quite a few parameters you can put in here so let's go to the help and figure out how this works so we go look up and so first we have to put in the list name so look up list name the list we're going to look for so first we might just break this apart a bit so we're going to look up and we're going to say this the uh, list is project sites so i go quotation marks project sites I think that looks pretty good. Okay, put the comma there. Now the next one is filter column name. So if you think about a SharePoint list, as I said, it's got that um, that hidden, uh, let's edit the view, edit the current view. And we're gonna put the ID in and put that as number one. So now we can see the ideas through here. So what we're saying is, Let's just turn off this column as well. Looks better. So seven Maple Maple Plaza. So what we're saying is look up project sites, which is over here, oh, which is over here. Now I want to pass in the ID column. I want to filter on the ID column. Next, what does it say? Filter value. So what we're going to pass in is what we were building before. So you could build another, you could use the parse lookup false, which would give you the ID. So we could put that in if we wanted to. So let's, let's put that in, we'll go parse lookup false, which is just the ID that's returned. And then finally, we, the last thing we need is what output column do you want? So we've filtered on this. We're going to parse, pass in the, the selected ID of the lookup control. And we actually want state and project manager. So we're going to say state. Now that's well and good, but this lookup function is assuming the data is in the site's team site, but it's not. It's actually in site's process fest. So there's a new parameter we can put in here, which is the server, server relative URL. So if we come back here, server relative means that's it's off the domain that's on. So we've got sites process fest. So we put another comma in there, a couple spaces, and we put the URL in there like that. You do also have the ability to put an array separator. That's only useful if you're querying something like a multi-choice, where it's gonna come back with multiple options. And in your multiple options, you might have uh, something like gamble, comma, Ewan. And if the separator is a comma, 
it's going to separate me as two people. So you might choose an alternative alternative array separator as hash semicolon like you saw before, but that's not necessary right now. Okay, so let's go and create that. Actually, let's go and copy. It's the wrong one. Copy this one because we're going to need the same thing for project manager. So we come here and we're going to say project manager. Make sure we've got that right. Project manager with an uppercase. I don't think it matters too much, but I'm just going to do that anyway. So I'll update that. So now we've got our parse lookup true, parse lookup false, the lookup state, and the project manager. So now we come to page two. Now we can start adding some more properties in here. What I might do is put, um, I might actually call this um, site, and we might call this ID, and we'll call it um, state. No, go to project manager first. Project manager. Uh, what did I call it? Look up project manager and state. Uh, two square brackets helps. Uh, look up state. Unbold that one. Okay. So let's see if I've got everything correct. Clicking on preview, I select, I don't know, Dixon Drive. Go to page two. So now we can see the list lookup value, eight delimiter, the address, and the site is now Dixon Drive. The ID is eight, and it's now giving me the project manager and the state of California. So what's happened here is these are all sort of running off a selection that you've made in the first drop down. So the first drop down, you've selected uh, Dixon Drive, and that's got an ID of eight from this list here. So if we come back to, let's get rid of this one, number eight. So you've made a selection with your drop down, you've selected Dixon Drive, it's gone, yep, not a problem. And what it's returned you is this eight and the value and the, and the, the selection text. So that we grab that, we say parse lookup is true, so give me the text. If it's false, gives me the ID. Once you've got the ID, you've passed the ID into that, into that lookup function and it's given you the project manager and the state. So I hope that's helpful to you. I hope that it explains the, the lookup function, the pass lookup function, and the list lookup control. Uh, it is quite complex, but the more you use it, the more familiar you get. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope it was helpful.